has a chance to write his name in Huddersfield Town legend. And he takes that chance! Welcome to episode 9 of the Andy Takes That Chance podcast. Like a Welsh friendly, I'm afraid we've had a number of withdrawals from the Andy Takes That Chance squad this week. And you're left with just myself, Neil, and veteran social mediaite Richard Kosmala. Good evening, gentlemen. Matthew, good evening. Good evening, lads. Okay, so I'd just like to open up the podcast by wishing the very best to Huddersfield Town legend Steve Smith and his family. Um, for those that don't know, Steve has sadly been diagnosed with dementia. Uh, four or five years ago, I was very fortunate to spend some time with Steve around junior football, and I had a little bit of a window into professional football for uh, for the best part of a decade, and, and he was one of, if not the nicest and most genuine person that had come across in that area. A really, real, true gentleman of, of football, and a real lovely person, so it's really sad to see what him and his family are going through, and for anybody that's wanting to read more, there's an article in the Examiner that you can read uh, where his daughter discusses what's going on with Steve and, and what they're going through at the moment. And she keeps and she asks town fans to just keep chatting to him when they see him. So if you are lucky enough to see Steve at the game, you know, say hello and uh, and have a chat if you usually do. And, and all the very, very best to uh, the Smith family, Steve, Lisa and Gary from all of us here at Andy Takes That Chance podcast. What this does, lads, as well, is it highlights the importance of charity work as well, such as the Wilson Walk, which happened on Saturday with 165 town fans walking across the tops uh, through some ropey weather to Burnley to raise money for the Yorkshire Air Ambulance and Alzheimer's Society. So well done and thank you to everyone who organised and took part in that walk as well. So it's it's good to know we've got some great people that run and support the football club as well. Absolutely. So on to, uh, on to Burnley. So before we talk about uh, Burnley, Cosy, uh, Neil... Uh, we didn't have a podcast last week, so we haven't really mentioned the Spurs game. So we'll do a little bit of Spurs in brief, seeing as it's over a week and a half ago now. So what was your take on the game, Neil? Well, I, I watched it through um, prescription drug-hazed eyes on the TV when I got home. Um, I thought we played really well. I thought 15, 20 minutes looked really good. Um, then obviously they've scored. I think we continue to play pretty decent throughout the game, but I think a bit of class in the end. They, they just showed that they're obviously better than us at this moment in time. And obviously there was a, quite a big talking point that I believe we're going to cover a bit later on. Yeah, I mean, I watched it in a, a bit of a drunken haze in Madrid. Uh, funny, I, I'm, uh, my uh, friend at work and his son went to the game and uh, they really enjoyed the game, but they said, Cosy, your team's got no plan B, mate. You've got no plan B and... I, I, it made me smile because as well as we started and as well as we were on the front foot and that, I, I still thought they were more likely to score, even though all the evidence your eyes were giving you, we had the ball, we were getting forward, I still thought they were more likely to score. And yeah, obviously it's been done to death on the, uh, you know, the, the Danny Rose and what have you, but it's familiar feelings really. But again, no one, I, don't, I didn't watch the second half, so it's hard to comment on the, you know, what happened there, because I think we give it a good go, but it's, yeah, for me, didn't tell us anything we didn't know already that, yeah, when we've got them moments, when we're getting the ball, when we're on the front foot, we need to score. So one thing it did tell us, Neil, was that Craig Parson is a, a huge whopper. Um, there's a foul on Pritchard in the build-up to the first goal, potentially, um, and the well, second it, one... It, well, it was blatant. It was yeah, bad. and the second one, uh, we'll, we'll talk about diving in um, a couple of minutes, but the second one looked, to me... Um, like there was nothing, you know, there's an invisible barrier which Danny Rose has tripped over, um, which for me isn't a penalty. And Craig Parsons' referee in display, in my opinion, uh, giving that penalty, took away our chance to go for a one-all draw. So we had the, we were playing well and we had the potential to cause a surprise. We, we, you know, we had you know, 53, 54% possession, which doesn't always count for everything, admittedly. We had that quite is a few a step shots forward though in previous games against top six sides. It's better. Last I think last year they probably had about seventy percent. So you know it's it's a big step forward. And in terms of possession and chances created, we created quite a few chances. Well, nothing clear cut, um, but we had we had you know more than what we had done against them and other clubs of the top six, apart from Man United at home last year. And it was it was a good display again and again something we didn't didn't quite deserve what we got in the end. But on to Burnley, uh, we all. Uh, we all saw that, didn't we? So, very briefly, the talk of systems can get a little bit 
a little bit boring. So, you know, match of the day had us down as playing a three five one one, but that's not really how I saw it. No. It was it was definite back four. Uh, me and a mate called it I don't know if you remember the old Brazilian formation where they used to call it the box formation where they used to call it play four two two two. And it was similar in a way it was very to, similar to that. But instead of having a striker, there's a winger, so you could call it an open top box if you really, really want. Um, whereas Moy came in a lot from the right hand side, and Eric Derm, looking fitter, stronger, had the whole flank to himself, and he played really well. Neil, it, it, it just showed us what he's all about. He's, you know, he's, he's not a World Cup winner for nothing. He's a, he's clearly a very, very good player, and I think as the season progresses, it will, will only see more from him. But the, the, the standout for me. Again, with another great cross, another great performance. A lot. Chris Lerva was excellent again. He's been he's been superb this season. He, yeah. he really, really has. And hopefully that was just cramp at the end of the game and there's nothing too it, it looked like, serious. It, yeah. it looked like cramp. Um, one thing that you've been championing, Cosy, quite a lot is the return of Alex Pritchard. And we saw him at number 10. Um, almost We we almost had two number 10s. Uh, how do you think he got on? I thought he did well uh, without you know being... Kind of in the outstanding department, but again, I, th- I always felt he was a threat when he had the ball uh, at his feet and kind of pushed Burnley back a little bit as well. He, yeah, he did. He did well for me, and I'm hoping that you know this is going to be the start of a run in the team that he's going to have. But obviously, as we've seen before, <laughs> who knows what Mr. Wagner's going to do next? But yeah, I was pleased to see him, and I thought he did all right. Seven out of ten, maybe performance without really hitting. You know what we did probably against Bournemouth back. Last he, he did enough to show us that he's got a lot more for us. Yeah, I for agree me. with so it. So he's, he's he's got to be worth. Yeah, at least that dozen that. starts without being interfered with now. I thought I thought that was his best performance since Bournemouth as well. I thought he started off first fifteen minutes. He did really well. First fifteen minutes he was buzzing around. Um, there's, I think in the past there's been a, not quite they're not quite at loggerheads, but the main creator mm-hmm. tends to be Aaron Moy, whereas Pritchard seems to want to, uh, play in what's referred to as like an enganche kind of role where it's almost like a static sort of number 10 whereby people move off him and Aaron Moy likes to do the same thing but from a little bit deeper so the lack of movement you know I've, I've mentioned before has stifled him quite a lot but there was plenty of it on Saturday and, and I was really happy to see that we've got Aaron Moy up alongside him and they're both creating both buzzing around and I was slightly I, I know I hate it when people have a go at this this one player in particular because I think he does far more than what people will recognise, but I was a little bit disappointed with Van La Parra at times on Saturday. Uh, there was a lot of opportunity for him to run in behind and he tends to hold off and want the ball at his feet a bit too much for me. And He had one or two opportunities and he did create and he did look and he did buzz and link quite well, but again, the decision-making. And one thing that we saw against Spurs, which was really, really promising, was um, Isaac and Benza came on and he, he had a, a good little cameo against Spurs in the second half and he was a little bit back to what we've seen before on Saturday where he wasn't quite sure of how to link up with some of the players and it just seems there's a, maybe a little bit of a not so much of a struggle but a, a, he's trying to connect with the teammates and it's not quite there yet I but think, I think you're going to get a bit of a self-confidence issue there is new country young lad trying to get in the side not getting in the side and to be fair we've played two or three different formations since he's got here as well so that can't be easy but the, the Van La Parra point is still He's still our best winger, probably. Isn't for, he? Yeah. for all the stick he does get, he's still the best threat, and he get he gets us up the pitch really well. Yeah, he does. There's no doubt in the final third he could be better, but if he were better than he is, he won't be playing for us. It's, it's a simple. We do example. see flashes every now and then. It's just if we'd have seen, I think if we'd have seen a few more from him on Saturday, we'd have we'd have won the game, and I thought we deserved to win the game. He didn't score enough goals. He didn't have enough. Well, a shot against Saturday, you know, poor and. That's. I don't think he'll ever change that. To be honest with, you. that's just him. And yeah, in the promotion it. season, he he gave us so much. But oh God, I'm, the only the only problem that you've got is like you think, well, who else could, you know, score? We saw Hog, you know, poof, bad slice, Mace. You've got no one. I, I don't think you can put your money on that. That I'm not, obviously that's the you know the problem really that you know can get in. You know when they're in them danger positions, more often than not, they're at least gonna you know kind of hit the target, score on that. It was so frustrating that first half because we fired out some warning signs, but it was all very, you know, woo, the away fans, their arms are out wide, and that that's that's yeah. how we operate, I'm afraid, yeah. with our shooting. Well, me, me and my dad were sat watching it, and uh, it wasn't a dissimilar start at Tottenham game, sort of 15, 16, 17 minutes of town being best side, and then they're flinging one, without a warning, maybe five minutes before, when they flung in across yeah. from from same wing and it went straight at Lossell, luckily, and yeah. then goal. 
I were right behind it, Neil. I was sat in front row on Saturday, and as soon as it hit, he said, I go. knew it would in. Yeah, I knew go. it would in. Just like when we come to Schindler's go, that as well. It will yeah. it will gut him because you know Sam Vokes is never going to beat it for pace. Yeah. You know what it's about. You know what you need to do. I thought Schindler were very poor, and I thought it were poor for Addy Kane, mate, uh, the week before. It's not going to be a popular opinion. I thought should have done better with that challenge in the air. Really disappointed, and we were punished massively. No, I, I agree. agree. I, I thought Schindler had a... It, it's, you don't want to say anything negative about Schindler because he's been a ma- heroic, not amazing, heroic for the yeah. last couple of years, but he, did, he did have a in that game. Exactly. He, he did have a day off against uh, against Spurs, I'll agree with that. But Neil, you wanted to talk about Schindler a little bit. Um, first 20 minutes, I thought both centre-backs were a little bit jittery yeah. with the balls in the box, but after 20 minutes, the I thought they both took a hold of... Uh, the game itself. I, I think they were helped a lot well. by having um, Og and Billy playing right in front of them. And obviously that gave the licence to Pritchard and Moy to be getting forward and doing what they do. And it, it does make a difference having them two there. And it, I, This might again be unpopular, but I don't think it's a coincidence that they played a lot better set out as a four and not try to show on the three good centre-backs that we've got into the team. Because I think we tend to do that a little bit with Zanka, Schindler and Congolo. And I think some you saw on Saturday, as, as best left back is Lerva. And as centre backs, we've got to start making a decision when Congolo's fit. It's two from three for me. I think that was well pleasing for me. Obviously, you touched on Durham there. I thought it was brill- you know, I don't know about brilliant, but he was really rock solid. And it got us out of an old because obviously we're coming at the game without Congolo. You're thinking, what's he going to do? And it was like, I'm not. Because obviously Burnley weren't exactly like Tottenham, but it's like he wasn't. We didn't miss him at all, really, and that yeah. was all. It was a seamless transition, yeah. which is when such a key player, what is he worth seventeen million, is out. Mostly teams would be like hurting, but I never saw that on Saturday. We, we weren't most going square pegs round also. We just went no. straight for a, a straightforward two centre halves, oh, just a right back and a left back. Please stay yeah. fit, Eric, because you know, you can see why we brought him in. He yeah, could be oh, please, yeah. please. And, Right back has obviously been an issue for some time, and that that could be the answer. What it's what quite telling now yeah. that club captain's third choice right back, which is mm. I don't think many people saw that coming. To I don't be think honest, he's fit, Neil, is it? But to be fair, even if he, he can't is, be, he yeah. be playing. He, he, no, he not... said they said there was a problem. I can't remember what it said, but yeah, oh, he's not growing. Yeah, growing even if he's yeah. got if he's fit, he's not getting anywhere. Near no, he's not getting at the moment. No, moment right. obviously, floor that'd be a big boost for him as well. Getting called up to the Swiss squad, full squad. Yeah, I, I like. I've always liked Tommy Smith, but he, he is obviously going to struggle to get back in due to his lack of foot speed, isn't he? Yeah, uh, that seems. I to think be the, it's, it's sad, problem. but it's a part of progressing the football club. Some of these lads who have got us to where we are now, there is going to come a point where, without being harsh, are just simply not going to be good enough anymore. It's, you know, it's we we let goals in, we don't score enough goals. The thing I love about it, Neil, and, and this is why I don't think anyone can knock us up. This the, the spirit we show. How many times, if you were a boxer getting the knockdown blows like we get, even the promotion season and things that have continued, we just seem to have this great knack of us like it's not happened, and we just kind of brush it off. Whether it's an ever defeat, whether it's a bad goal, because that folks goal, we started really well, you know, like kind of following on the second half against Tottenham that goal goes in and I've got to be honest if I'm playing I'm not the most kind of guy you want in a trench with me I'd be absolutely good we've started yeah. well it would an half just a, a decent cross and they've scored I'd be, but no the lads just like we right just carried on. we just carried, just carried on, on and honestly it's total yeah. credit resilient, you know, to us they're resilient just for a team that haven't won in, in so many games yeah. it, it is total and respect no, and to knowing the, that the goals are such a premium yeah. you go one behind you're then looking and thinking best we're going to get today is a point yeah, at best. One goal we've scored. Yeah. Let's be fair, without being overcritical, you can't see us getting two in a game at the moment, can you? No, and but that's why the fan base is like, the fans again were brilliant on Saturday, yeah, and it was the same right. at Everton, Neil, because yeah. they can see. That's why people from outside will say to me, "Oh, you don't want to get in. You must be." Says no, because no. I think Pozzer summed it up in that beautiful tweet that he sent me, and I retweeted it out. He says if we go down playing like that, then I've not got a problem. Yeah, and I, I think that, that yeah, I, I fully agree superb. with that. Fully agree that with that. Actually, that yeah. we've got. I, think, I think everyone would be happy. If, it's, it's what we've been calling for: is just get on the front foot and have you know, have a go and have a go. If if you don't win, you don't win. You know, it's, there's a lot of quality in the Premier League. No one's going to have a go at you for having a go. The frustrating it, thing Saturday was the fact that we had not really great chances, but with two or three good chances. Yeah, Obviously, the Depatra one, yeah. where we've we've chased mm. the ball down, we've added Tarkovsky. 
They've scuffed it. We've got him behind. I don't know about, I'm going to come controversially, but I thought it would have, honestly, the block, but I thought it was slow to pull that trigger again. No, I really do, mate. I just think a gun striker is bang, and he's obviously to come on more pay later on. And To me, to me that's got to be 1-0. Yeah, that is slow. Because against us, you know, full well, that's him back in there. You've got I to be aware Mooney of it. scores that, though. I know. Yeah. There's been times where, like, when De Prots had that chance at Leicester, that would have been Mooney, but then... Opposite, it's almost like we've got two strikers, and and the, t- the chances are falling to wrong yeah, ones at the moment. Aren't yeah, yeah, but you just don't know. It's frustrating. To, to me, is is he's got to score that. I thought it was a bad miss rather than an amazing it'd be, block. It'd be great. Yeah, I agree. And, and I, I think it'd be nice to see us actually get in front for once and then see what happens, rather than be fearful of going behind. Then we go behind, and then you think, well, best we get in here is a point. It'd be actually nice to get in front and have somebody having to come and chase us because we can defend. We are decent yeah, at yeah, defending. There's no doubt yeah. about it. It's just other end where we struggle. Yeah. What What I said after the after the game was I I felt that we were for 90 minutes the better team between both penalty boxes. I thought where Burnley was slightly better for parts of the game were in the penalty box. And I think that sums Burnley up is that they're not a pretty team to watch. They play quite quite dour football. Um, yeah. Quite direct. You know, a lot of crosses into the box. A lot of hustle and bustle, if you like. And and I just think their masters at just doing bits inside the box to put the bodies on the line like Tarkovsky that block on De Poitre. yeah De Poitre maybe could have been quicker but it's still a good block they're like, they're like a posher version of a Warnock team yeah whereas yeah. Warnock's a bit more blood and guts sort of, yeah. yeah a bit mucky with it I think you find that Dyche's team they do, they've got a better standard of player than they, but it's a similar kind of approach yeah, make sure you make sure that you win everything in either box and second balls as well. Yeah. Make sure you win Very your second balls. Eye, yeah, balls. They, they are the masters at that, and there's nothing, nothing wrong with that per se. It's, it's what they do. Um, but it's still but, all right, isn't it? but yeah, I thought as the game went on, I thought we got better in our defensive penalty box than they did, and we got on top. And Schindler's taken a a bit of a whack from from Sam Vokes, but we'll talk first about De Poitre and Tarkovsky, seeing as though we've we've mentioned them. Um, there's a um, an incident, so we'll call it the tale of two dives, if you like, because last week we saw Danny Rose against us get a penalty for minimal contact, we'll say. There's a slight pull on the shirt around the edge of the box. Nothing takes his feet. There's there's nothing that takes his feet away for him to go down. No. Uh, I've got a quote from him from the Evening Standard as well, which says... You can see from the replay yourselves that there was contact. I'm through on goal, so there's no reason for me to go down if there's no contact. For me, that says, I've felt a tug, so I've gone down so to I'm win a penalty. Down, yeah. For me, that is blatant cheating, yeah, is. and he's admitted to it. Yeah. There's there's no other but, way for it. It's, if, you, if you listen to senior pros and some old referees who comment on these matters on Sky and what have you, they condone it. It's setting a touch, is it? I hate it, And, and they say... That the phrase that they all use is is with well within his rights. He's is been clear. It's, it's it? cheating. It's cheating. There's not. There's not nothing free, taking not his legs. On halfway line is it? And he ain't gone down on halfway line, has he? As far as I'm concerned, there's nothing's taken his legs, so he's not within his rights to go down. No. It's cheating. Well, and if you're on a pull on your shirt and you're running forwards, you you won't you won't fall forwards like he's falling no, forwards. No, it's, it's pathetic. I don't. I, I've said it before. I for the referee, I I just look, think how it looks, and at the time I I, I said it out loud. It's penalty. And then when you get, you know, and then now we've seen the replay and what have you, but I, that view that we had from the camera nearly, whether he touched it, I can see why he give it. And to me, I, that's why I won't get mad with referees and, and, and stuff like that. It was an impossible job. The what it made it, it's opinions, it is. It? And I just thought at the time, penalty, my mate who was at the ground and he was sat in the FM low and he thought penalty. And I said, oh, have you seen a replay? Have you seen this? No, mate, it was a penalty with that. So I I can, I didn't think it was the outrage everybody would thought. And I think, for me, there were too much outrage about the referee fact, I mean, and stuff last there week, were, Neil. There were, there were Dion Dublin and Leon but... Osman on BBC doing that final score programme with updates and what mm. have you. And Leon Osman, were, I won't say he was incensed, but he, he, he wasn't amused, was no, he? No, he, he just said, "What having seen it first time, he didn't think it was a penalty. And on replay, he just said, I'd, I'd be contemplating booking rows. For simulation, he said, because I just VAR would have been fascinating. VAR would have been fascinating. VAR would have been interesting. VAR would have probably given it because of a slight contact. Yeah, and and that's the problem. It's still to open fair, to interpretation of it, the referee. When you look at De Poitras on Saturday, there's just there's contact. He's our player. He's <laughs> our player, but 
I've, I've, there's, I've no time for that. Just blatant cheating. It's it's awful to watch. I don't want to see it. And I, I, I'm not one who wants town to come out and say they've fined him this, that, and other, and done whatever else. But internally, I'd like. I'd like to think that there's somebody pulling to the sign and give him a good old bollocking for that because that's all. Yeah, me and me and Cosy were on Radio Leeds um, yesterday, weren't we? And and one thing Johnny said to us, I don't know whether I should call him Johnny because it's what you call him, Cosy. It's Jonathan Book, and they always put on Radio Leeds, don't they? So one thing he he mentioned the uh, the dive, and I remember saying to him there that against Spurs every centre-back seemed to be going through the back of him. You know, there was quite a lot of force. And as soon as anyone went near Harry Kane, he was down like a leaf. It was he was pathetic, it was Harry Kane. And as soon as anyone went near De Poitre, he did get some physical treatment from the defenders. And he just bounced off and tried to play on. And I was saying to him then, I've, maybe he needs to learn to go down and be a bit more clever, but nobody wants to see that. On, on, on subjects of him going down easy, ever since they've got back from World Cup and you're watching these England players who... At a decent World Cup, they're all as bad as each other. Yeah. Harry Kane's going down soft. Danny Rose is going down Same soft. Harry Maguire was Harry, Harry, Harry Maguire, yeah. look at me leg, look at me leg. There's nobody touched yeah, you. Get up your tart. The thing what you know, dis- disappointed me a little bit, obviously they've come on a stamp. He got stamped and didn't deserve that. But if Andrew Potter, I'd have got up, I'd have gone eyeball to eyeball, they have gone mental with the referee or the linesman. But he just seemed to kind of accept that he, he'd cheated. He kind of, because he gave him verbals. He didn't yeah. even get back up. I wanted to see... I don't know what's wrong with De Potter this time. I don't know if he's it's, it's lost a bit of weight. But I wanted to see a different reaction there. Were a, there. There, were a, there were a lack of... If somebody did stamps on me, yeah. if I dived or not, yeah. I'd, it'd be stuff for a neck job. And yeah. I think towards the end of last season, I think he'd have probably got sent off himself for throwing him off at the pitch. Yeah, that, but I, it, it, it's, that just something I, up to I, me, Neil, a bit too nice, really, and that as well. I'll tell, tell you what disappointed me about that is the fact that Town haven't mentioned it. There's no, nothing no, come from no, club no, to no. say... We're looking into it further, you know. Yeah, when when, it, when yeah. town are getting slated left, right, and centre from every possible corner about the Poitras dive, I wanted town to come out and fight a bit of fire with fire and say, yeah, yeah, yeah totally you know, man. fair enough, condemn your own player. Yeah, he shouldn't have died. It's awful. And we'll, he did, did wag. We'll yeah, yeah, we'll find him internally, yeah. whatever. But come out and say on the subject of yeah, give Dice some that, back, give some know, of it back. Tarkovsky yeah. as a as a New England international needs to be setting a better yeah. example and. He, he were in, I ain't got a problem with him being down in the Patras and you shouted at him because it's cheating. But to then, he, he could have pulled his foot away. It were very reminiscent to me of the Charlie Austin one on Lossel last season. Yeah. When it were, it were very, very deliberate. There were nothing accidental about it. Totally agree. And I just no, wish I, Town had have said something. It's a really odd one, really, because obviously they, they watch videos and they get stuff back. So he mentioned, obviously, the elbow, which probably come on in a second, but it's the guys of the video guys that... I wonder what did he not get told? Did Wagner not see? It was a bit of an odd one not to even mention it. Or well, to it was bizarre yeah. because it was a female commentator on Match at yeah, Day. The only person. And, and that, she was the only yeah. one who was mentioned yeah. it. And I'm thinking, because she's mentioned it in commentary, surely they're going to talk about it in aftermath on highlights or what have you. When they do the breakdown of the game, the so called expert punditry, and not not even mentioned it. And I'm thinking. Mm. Is that surprising? This is completely surprising me. I think. It, it doesn't surprise me with match with the BBC. To be honest, oh, no, no, it doesn't surprise me with them not commenting, but it surprised me that nobody has, and the only one who's actually mentioned it anywhere at all is Mark Halsey. Yeah, in a piece in that, paper that doesn't bother me. Kind of to be honest, Neil, it's just what you said there. It bothered me that they either did put an it stick up for itself in that in a melee or after town or town didn't. It was just yeah. and, and God, it, it goes against what I've just said there. Where we're fighting, we you know we battled for everything, but it was just almost that acceptance that yeah, yeah. I've died and. Yeah, he yeah. whispered in his ear. I really wanted to uh, see a bit of a different reaction there. Yeah, that I think well. to be to be Johnny fair, Og won't imagine that if it had been Johnny Og. Wow. I think I to be fair to Dick Watcher but... though, he's his face is in the grass, you know, at the point where the stamp comes in. I don't think he knows whether he's been stamped or know whether he's just yeah, fallen maybe, over him. Maybe. Um I can see what Dick is trying to do. He's well, trying to be, he's trying to be clever. Afterwards. They have, but I can see what Dick is trying to do with the penalty. He, he he sees Tarkovsky coming in and he's dangled a leg out and he thinks he's gonna get yeah, taken out. But we still don't want to see him do it. There must have been like another 80 mile an hour win like there were for the game last season with Van La Parra. There must be something <laughs> same, at that same, end. We seem to yeah, save yeah. it. We seem to save Winter all our worst dives. Same, yeah, yeah. same week at year. There's same referee. Yeah, this must be on. This must, that's all I can think. <laughs> same ref as well. Cabinet. Oh, to be fair, had a decent game. It was a decent yeah, game. I thought he did. I thought it was I, pretty I think good. The, the Volks won his harder for him because you can't see that. It's easy to see it watching it back. Mm. But... He's in front as well, so he can't he's quite. In front and, yeah, and striker, strikers do jump with their arms. It's what it. It's mm. just what they do. 
I think at half time it was interesting that in the concourse bit. So it's always a good gauge, I think. You know what people think. People were really happy. People were really, you know, the usual. We played really well. Disappointing. We didn't obviously get on the score sheet. But I think people were thinking, and I was too, that Burnley can't be give us that much, you know, kind of possession and they would be much better second half. So there were a bit of trepidation think, have we missed our opportunity here? But no. as we saw in the second half, we not at all. Yeah, we should. We should have won we that, should. Yeah. I think we could, if we if we are towards bottom three and within striking distance of relegation, that that could well be one of those games you look back yeah, and definitely. go... How convinced we were going to win it in here. Once we equalised, I thought, yeah. this here we go. But it never really happened, did no. it, the last 25 no. minutes? The, the, the last 20 were a bit of a... Yeah, it was. A bit of a non-event, to be honest. It was sort of yeah. tippy-tappy between both sides, but... I think the Schindler injury took the sting out of it a it little bit, didn't it? completely um, wiped yeah. the game I think he was down Schindler for five, six injury, minutes, yeah. wasn't he? And I think yeah. that kind of... It's not obviously not Christopher Schindler's fault, but I think just no. the breaking play just yeah, stopped. Yeah. And then Lerva went down a couple of minutes after. And yeah. So I think for me, so just to wrap up the two incidents. So Tarkovsky, for me, he's stepping over Du Poitre and he, you can see, visibly see he moves his leg he could have and he stamps it. on him on purpose. I'm absolutely convinced that that's yeah, what he does. there's no doubt about it. And he's got previous for this as well. He's He's been done before for violent conduct away at Brighton last season. He's It's in his makeup. It's it's James Tarkovsky. It's, yeah. it's blatant. And I'm not surprised to see that he's and not it's been pulled up. And it's annoying as well because he's a good centre-back. He no, is, I'd have him. I, I <laughs> he's Lincoln one of those players, he's a good centre-back. You'd have him, he's, he and puts well, his body on the line. He's, he's one of those that advocated for time signing when he would have hold him. Yeah, we wouldn't pay the uh, yeah, couple hundred grand yeah, for him. Yeah, yeah. he went to Brentford and the rest, as they but say. But you never know, he could have signed for us and been the next Murray yeah, Wallace. Could you have never been, know, yeah, could have been the next Andy Duggan. <laughs> um, yeah, so the Vokes one. So we've we spent three years watching Alan Lee elbow people, so we know when somebody does it on purpose, don't we? So for me, Sam Vokes... See how felt. So for me, Sam Vokes, if Sam Vokes looks back and looks where Schindler is and then moves his elbow, that's then an obvious elbow. But because he didn't do that and he just, and you do jump with your arms as a striker, I just thought he's, he couldn't tell whether he'd done it on purpose or not. So I'm, I'm not going to castigate. The thing Sam about Vokes. Sean Dice as well, it's all very good in chelping about diving and being the only advocate for diving or to get diving out of the game and rattling on about how his lad plays football and they're all trying it. But they've had two of the worst offenders that we've seen in Premier League history. Scott Arfield he's a, he's a hypocrite, was Sean an absolute Dyche. shocker. Mm. And didn't he get actually in retrospect they they done for it? Yeah. He's a, and he's then a hypocrite. I remember one, there were Joey Barton when they played Lincoln in FA Cup. And he just, it was an absolute, well, nobody anywhere near him. He went down like, it, they were like big Matt Reid for Lincoln. Yeah. Who went nowhere near him and Joey Barton goes down holding his face, rolling round. Seems to forget the Well, to be honest, um, in the same Dyson. game, in the same game, Charlie Taylor did the exact same as De Poitre, but yeah. in the centre yeah, circle, so it's not as. And he did the exact same thing. You could see from where we were, it was the most blatant dive after De Poitre. And nothing said, but he's, for me, Sean Dyche is a hypocrite, he's a boring hypocrite. Yeah, he is, completely. Uh, and we'll come on to more about him afterwards as well. The goal would have brilliant for town. And again, I bought everyone there from the front row, but it was just the best feeling ever when that header went in because I knew it was going all the way and Joe Hart just stood and watched yeah. it. The only thing was it going to go past post, but he went in there and the it celebration went, went were wild. Yeah, the look of the town fans behind, they got everyone going absolutely bonkers. And he was yeah. just like, oh, well, we're an equaliser at Burnley, but it just shows how we're, feast, we're like feasting on scraps. Starved of goals. Starved of everything. <laughs> It was a beautiful moment, and uh, well, the, the fans, yeah. the fans came across. I, like, I watched it on a stream again, and uh, the fans came across really, really well on that. You couldn't Burnley normally won it quite won it louder home crowds as well. Yeah, they're not bad. Are they? Yeah, they were, they're not bad. They were pretty quiet. All they were, I were right next to that. They were brilliant. The Burnley fans. This is what I love about Turf Moor. Proper old school. There was some right stuff. We don't want to put it on this pod, but we're being swapped language and stuff. When we came out of the cricket field, walking around the way end, there were it were about ten to three. There were beards. Beard up fans, Beard. both sides, it were getting a bit... <laughs> like Vikings. Fast. But you know what? That's what football's about. It's not about them fan packs at Man City with some idiot with a microphone and mascots and all that. I'm sorry for anyone who goes to our fan packs. That, for me, is a proper atmosphere. The cricket yes. club, everything about it, their town, and, you know, and depresses me, no matter what you think of Daesh and Burnley, but... I think there's a place know, for both, isn't it? It's there? brilliant, a place man. For both. It was just like a both. proper old-school away day. You even got a beautiful pie at half-time and... Swapping, you know, they, they were giving it out when we scored, we were right across and that. And, but at the end, there was just like that respect when it were won all the way. But look, it's like, that's what football's about. And yeah. long live, you know, Turf Moor, Burnley and that kind. When they sing No One Likes Us, I totally get what they're meaning because 
Dykes were mentioning before the game, and, and not, not often. I think people... we're very similar, aren't we, in terms of the way we viewed yeah, as clubs, cause, aren't we? Because the last non match of the day, your, your, your main incidents are kind of blown up, but there would yeah. be if they were, you know, the big four or five or whatever. Well, could and that could as well. you imagine if that incident is, say, it were Man U and Man City, and it's. Oh, they'd be still talking about oh, the top and, and it's, now, it's Chris Smalling on Aguero. Aguero goes down, nobody near him, dive. And then Smalling stamps on him. Can you imagine? Oh my word! It'd be on back it'd be still on about it'd be on it'd be front penalty. page, yeah. back page of every paper. Yeah. There'd be both. There'd be red cards all over the place. Mm-hmm. There'd be both managers spitting, absolutely seething. But because it's Burnley Lusfield, just pass me that brush and lift carpet up, and we'll sweep it under there and move mm. on. So I, I put a tweet out as well. So before we finish the Burnley game, so um, so obviously we like it when people get in touch, don't we? And and interaction with twitter and other social media is is great um so thanks to everybody that's got in touch again so one thing i put out was should players who die face harsher penalties retrospective bans or is the yellow card sufficient and also is it an intention intentional stamp and why the lack of discussion on that in the mainstream media so for you guys i think i think what's really good to see is that every town fan has gone he's di- has dived there's no place for it and it's it's great when I've seen Premier League clubs dive. You know, Harry Kane against Liverpool stands out last year, and and there's so many fans are blindly sticking up for players, and, and yeah. they don't they don't care about the what I'll say is the um, the It'd game be itself. To see if Burnley had been playing a Man City Liverpool on Saturday, and it had been Firmino or Aguero and diving, would the referee have seen it different? Because yeah. it's those big clubs and it's those big players. It's, don't know, do you? Mm. They'd, be, they'd be more like. I, I think it depends on the referee. Some of them are actually don't, quite don't good. Not, not, the thing awful. is that all the dives are not as obvious, though. I mean, like Van der Parra, obviously, last year at Burnley <laughs> and Departure, obviously, it's them. But I think if you're going to. Because, like you say, they have brought in retrospective ones. Then, when you mentioned there, Neil, for the two Burnley players, I think it's pretty obvious to me. The problem is, obviously, we've got their referees give his decision. It's a yellow. Mm. But. And they are, I mean, I've not heard anything about the stamp, but presuming that's not, nothing's... Well, they, 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 they want books so they can go back to that. Yeah. And also the Volks one, yeah. they want books either, so they no. could have gone back to that. But yeah, let's, yeah. Retrospective bans yeah. for you guys? Yeah, 100%. Definitely. Yeah. But you know what, yeah. Matt? If he gets that penalty and then we win 2-1, I'm not a winner at all costs, man. I kind of like principles and morals, but there'll be some people out there that think, Good, you know, if he'd have done it, and we'd have won, we ended up winning well, let's two. Be honest, at they the wouldn't time, be bothered, would they? Town had won a match. At the time, if he give the penalty, Moy steps up, bags it. And then, are, are we complaining that it ended at two one? No. I'd, I'd be happy with the win. I feel probably feel a bit dirty I'd, about I'd, it, I'd, but I'd, I'd still I'd, be happy with the win. But if he's given the penalty at the time, you'd just assume it were a penalty. And then if it was quite close to it. But when you saw it afterwards, that, oh, I saw it uh, live, I, I, and I was I'd, like, I'd, oh. I'd still condemn him regardless because it's just wrong. Yeah, whether, so sh- whether it's De Poitre, Aguero, whoever, it's wrong, and they should. If if if, if FA turned around and said that he's, he's got a three-game ban, yeah, no problem. Whether he's been booked, in, they, they need to change that rule as well because that's a load of rubbish. Yeah, someone made a good point. There's I think no way that if you've been booked during game. That, that incident should then be left alone. What's uh, me and Cosy? We watch rugby league, don't we? And there's uh, one thing that they do in rugby league is where they put incidents on report, um, whereby they can't make a full decision in the game, which gets a lot of, gets slated a lot in rugby yeah, league. But it's used too much as a comfort blanket. But on that, yeah. it'd have been ideal. But, to yeah, be fair something like on that, that one because he'd still got a, the referee. He could still book him because yeah. it's obvious. But then the re- you know you could put the mm. incident on report and then you could say, look, the yellow card's not sufficient. You deserve a ban. Probably an argument for another day, is it? You know, Simi, yeah. Card, did you get him off for ten minutes? You, but yeah, let's let's we're, find we're out what Twitter what thought. Did, then, so sure. we'll go, we'll we'll go back into Twitter as I mentioned. It. So Matthew Neary says the stamps are disgrace. Uh, Paul Dobbin uh, has come to. He said, lads, one diving should be a straight red, not yellow. The ban should be four or five games, whether dealt with at the time by the ref or retrospectively. Either stop that, stop it. Yeah, it would. <laughs> it's a harsh one, but yep. Um, give, and, him a, give him a ten game ban for it. You'd never, you won't say diving. <laughs> Uh, number two, that was definitely an intentional stamp. One can only guess what he whispered in his ear too. I presume it won't be very nice. Um, and yeah, Paul mentions as well Van La dive last season as well. Um, James Hood uh, mentions the Arfield dive against Everton as well. Um, 
He also says, strangely, Deitch was very quiet about that one uh, because Sean Deitch is a hypocrite. Yeah, correct. Um, Graham Rayner, who um, gets in touch with us. Thanks, Graham. Uh, he's put, I think the rules are, cr- are clear. Uh, the referee punished him. For- <laughs> I thought it was just what else. Uh, <laughs> you know, would have been right. The amount, of ed- <laughs> the amount of editing I have to do on this because <laughs> no. I trip over my own tongue, yeah. Uh, the referee punished him for an intentional dive in the match, uh, so the media outrage and Sean Deitch's gravelly gobbing off should have no impact. It was, in my eyes, an intentional stamp, but hard to prove hope. Departure is fired up for the return fixture. He's right in everything he says there, apart from hard to prove. It's not. It's there in, it's there in TV pictures, loud, loud and clear in colour. It's a blatant stamp. It can go back. It's a three-game ban, simple as for me. Yep, I agree. Um Rig, half agree. Stronger punishment for simulation plus other cheating outside the box. Looks look for fouls in and around the box. Officials should be more observant. I'd, I'd be tempted to kind of stick up for officials a little bit because you just get that split second to make a decision, don't you? So I'm I'm more for retrospectives. Um, I think if it's easy to make a mistake when you've got to a second. To be fair as well, they build reft it sat, is it Kavanagh? He did well. He, yeah, he did well. He, he's, he did well. He's, he's one of... The few. I'm with the VAR. Unfortunately, lads. I went to a game in Spain the week before. Mm-hmm. Uh, two two. Last minute, guy goes in the box. Penalty given. Everyone's like hands on the knees. Goes to the van, and the incident had happened just outside the box. No one had a problem with it. Interviews after chilled out and stuff. And I just think that, you know, like stuff like that, cut and dried, and, and everyone's like goes home just as being. I'm really changing my mind on I, the VAR. Come, I were very. I, anti- I'm 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 two ways on VAR. I think the goal line technology is brilliant because it's factual and it's instant. I think VAR for me, it's still an opinion. Yeah, when, you when you're going off, it's facts. Yeah, the fact it's, stuff's all right, isn't it? If, if yeah. it's something where they look back at a penalty and go, yeah, he's never touched him, that's not a pen. Mm. Or it's a blatant, yeah, he's caught him on the back of his heel, it's a penalty. But the stuff where you've got to watch it, yeah. if they've got yeah. to go and watch a replay seven or eight times, there's too much yeah. doubt there for me to start. I'm going to contradict to one on that as well because, like, two days after in another Spanish game, there was an handball, and, and that is where it's like you were blasted. You know, within I went to that Madrid derby, there were that you blasted at uh, Sergio Ramos, he put his hands in front of his face, didn't go to VAR. The Atletico players were screaming, go to the VAR, refused to do it. And it was no worse than one they gave on Sunday, where exactly the same. They went to the van, they give a penalty. Them are the ones I think where the, that they sounds like Van Laparo Sheffield Wednesday a few years ago. But yeah. let's just finish the, the uh, let's finish the Twitter um, Twitterati. Let's say uh, Chris Taylor. Uh, this is one I agree with. Red card for Dupuacher diving in a one match ban. I think that's sufficient. Personally, I wouldn't go too overboard with four or five game bans. Uh, I Ta- would. Tarkovsky deserves a red. Uh, Andrew because Garner. The, the, if a one game ban. The risk's worth it, innit? But he gets sent off as well. So it's like you miss one and whatever. But the, the, the risk for them at a one-gamer is worth it. If you've got a penalty game, they're not going to play a game again. So he's got the pen they've scored. Mm. For, for me, mi- minimum three what game did, uh, for it, I, I, I can't remember what the Everton striker got. Was that two or three games when he, he was done retrospectively? I, I, I can't remember, but it should, be, it should be a three. Yeah, so... so I like the way this, this tweet's coming from Andrew Garner where he's put, to me it's a stonewall dive then the player should be sent off and banned for three matches. Uh, or if it's inconclusive at the time and he's found guilty of diving after the match on a replay then he should still get a three match ban. Andrew from Beaumont Park. I quite like that as it uh, reminds me of the old Radio Leeds Texans does that one. Um, Phil Beaumont who me and you both know. Bomber, right? Yep, who still I don't think he's realised his own cousins on this, uh, <laughs> <laughs> on this podcast yet so we'll keep it that way. Um, You've just told him. Yeah, I don't think he listens. It's fine. So the only thing Dupuach is guilty of is not been as cute as the countless others that are conning us all week in, week out. He's not related to me now. <laughs> um, it's a point though, isn't it? Because some of them are just very good at it. Yeah, they? they are, and they're sneaky. And he's right, actually, in a lot of what he says. A lot of them just time it better. And uh, Bedmeister as well. It's a disease that's taken over the modern game, and he'd like to see retrospective bands. And he's right. It's Football's moved on a lot, hasn't it, from... When we we, I suppose when we fell in love with it, if you like, in the yeah, I, I like I said, I've changed my mind. If I can see why the ref give it, I'm not going cheat, cheat, cheat. I thought some of the stuff, the top them, obviously watching from afar, and it's different when you're watching out not at the stadium because you haven't got the passion and the outrage. But I felt all the outrage, the Twitter, I were reading rules, this and that and the other, and I just thought, I can see why I give it, and you can't tell me from the evidence that it got that that was a dive. You you can think that, but there's not hundred percent concrete evidence. So for me, there, I'm thinking. 
I can't be outraged because I can see why I give it, and you can't prove the other way. So it, they are bones of contention to them, and they're clever. Like I say, that, that tweet there, they're clever, being clever with it. Rose were clever. They potted if it had done it a millisecond before. Who, who knows? Well, this now. is what Gary Crossland has said as well, which is a good one. He said, there should be harsher retrospective bans, but some people are, are just better at it than others. When Dermot Gallagher thinks Danny Rose's dive is a penalty, what's the point in discussing it further? Because, again, fair point. it's down to interpretation and... They'll tend to side on the referee's decision and favour the bigger team. So there's no doubt the names are back of the shirts, but I don't know about the bigger teams, Matt, because you're t- telling me that Van La Pad and we saw that in the championship as soon as we went a big team. Then obviously we went up, but people see Van La Pad and going down. I'm not it doesn't happen. So people are just going to think, oh, it's Radio Van La Pad, then it's not going to be given. So like to me, I don't know about this big teams. They're going to have more attacking opportunities, so they're going to get more penalty opportunities. But I don't know. I just think sometimes the name on the back of the shirt is the issue. Yeah, so we'll just, we've had a lot of response, so thank you to all the others, uh, Hudders Luke, Blue Army, HTFC, um, Graham Rayner again, Paul the Osset, Terrier, Freddie Cocker, Elliot, so, and uh, Andrew, the Regimenator. Um I think finally the last one, and Hotline Billion, of course, so I think finally the last one we'll mention is Graham Rayner's mentioned the mainstream media, so that was probably the only comment that people haven't, so <clears throat> he's mentioned that. He thinks David Wagner should be using this to create the kind of siege mentality that the best managers foster at clubs. Everyone is against us. Everybody hates us. No one rates us. Let's prove everybody wrong. So this can create make us greater than the sum of our parts. So That's what I'm saying, partly, though, with Tam not kicking up a fuss about the stamp. But I think Wagner does that anyway without... He's just a bit kind of nicer. Yeah, nicer than, kind it, yeah. yeah, and that's why people probably like him more than, than yeah. maybe Sean Dice if you did a poll. But they both got their ways of doing the siege mentality. I suppose no one's wrong and, and no one's right. Mourinho obviously got his way and it doesn't seem to be working very well at the moment. So let's move on away from Burnley. So we've we've done that to death now. Uh, Neil, uh, you put a poll out from your account at Bradford Terrier. I did, yeah. Um, regarding, well it was done, a li- I think it was a little <laughs> bit... Well, I won't say well done because I don't think half the people got understood what it was. Did they? <laughs> yeah. It was a bit confusing. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I, in Neil's defence, in Neil's defence, <laughs> he is he is recovering from an ankle operation and has done an absolute solid in getting here tonight as well. Um, Joe Lolly is absolutely ripping up the championship for yeah. Nottingham Forest, and it's great to see. Pretty much every Huddersfield fan is delighted that he is doing yeah. so, as we are as well, because he's a great lad, is Joe. Cracking lad. Um, you sent a tweet out um, with a poll asking if it was a mistake to get rid of him, Neil. What were the results on that one? Not overwhelming, but it was about 55-45 agreeing with town, letting him go. Are you happy with are you, would, would, are you happy with that? I'll be honest, I'm sort of mixed both ways. I'm, just, like, I'm getting splinters again, sat on the fence, but I think we saw a glimpse of what he could do with that, well, brilliant West goal Ham, against yeah, West Ham. Fabulous. Um, but over a, over a sustained spell, we never saw enough. And I think, would he have played much more for town? Probably not. So I think for Joe, it would be a great move. And obviously, he's, he's gone down to Forest and he's, he's flying. So I'd be interested to see him if they went up, what he were like. But he'd, he'd had a good spell at town. He'd, he'd been, you know, he'd been there what four or five years. And four I think, years. I, th- yeah. I think he needed. For, for me, I think he probably needed to leave. Sometimes it just it happens like that. Sometimes players stagnate. It's like Joe Lolly had. I think at the start he had a a bit of an an internal discipline issue. He had problems with shin splints, with running. Yeah. They had to teach him how to run again properly, and and it just didn't quite take off for him. And you get in a certain mindset where you just kind of think, is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Yeah. And. I personally think the move's done him the world of good. He's, you could always see he had talent, but it just never quite manifested itself with us. And, and it, to be honest, he, were, he were never going to get a run in the side long enough. No, and because the only position that he would play really now, where he play now, is inside of Pritchard, and even Pritchard can't get inside. So Joe Lally certainly wouldn't have been. No, so for me, it's um, a fair decision letting him go, and I'm just happy to see that he's he's doing well and he's proving people that he can. Play yeah, at the good, good luck to yeah, him. Great absolutely. lad. Great lad. Obviously, he's down there with another town legend. Indeed, and one thing I have been, I get one thing. Sorry, just kind of putting in. There's such a difference between championship and Premier. I know it's an obvious statement, but no, I, there is. There's a it's huge a physical, the physical side, especially. Yeah. So, so I'm surprised. I'll, yeah, don't get me wrong. It's good that he's doing well, but 
we see it quite a lot when any town players do well in the championship. I just fair play is good because yeah. that's what makes me wonder about our squad going down. The thing there that sprung me on it, I'm, I'm I'm saying there was a clip on Twitter of his goal that he got against At Middlesbrough, Middlesbrough. <laughs> and I just I just watched it and I just thought that is one strike, and I'm just interested to see what. No, it's a fair, what, it's a fair what question. Fans thought, but it's a fair question. I'm, I'm with you. I think Championship's probably is a good Championship player yeah. at the minute. It, yeah. Will he will he go any further? I hope he does, but it probably it wouldn't I think have been with us. Ne- negatively, a couple of people said we could have done with keeping him because if we're in Championship next year, it'd be good for us. But you can't keep you get that good two thousand yeah. players I mean, on your him. squad. Yeah. You know, for, you get you get ben, that good by playing games though. You yeah, don't get that yeah. good by sitting nah. in the stand. I suppose so. the debate is Mbenzi and Diakabe are they any better than than Lolly? And that and obviously we're tight yet, again. We? we still don't know. Mm. So on Radio Leeds the other night, uh, last night, Cosy, you were asked about a striker that we've been linked with. I, not complain, but I make a mention that I hate it when Dupuatra and Mounier come on and play at the same time because they are so similar. Everything about them is similar. They both attack the first ball. They both do pretty much the same thing. They don't run behind. They they both play with a back to goal, etc., etc. And we've been linked with um, Brentford striker Neil Morpe, I think is the pronunciation on yeah. that. It's fitting well on Saturday's evidence with Hoon de Yeah. It's but a, the, uh, he seems to be getting a lot of stick, but it was Ollie Watkins who went down for the uh, for the penalty, uh, yeah, which yeah. again is, is another dive, uh, but we're not going to bother talking about that. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but so Neil Morpe, so we were linked in the summer with him as well. So obviously it seems to have been a bit of a continuation and 10 goals so far this season. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen anything of him. No, and I, I think you've just answered my question there, Matt. Because that for me, we just this story just came out of nowhere. It was a big story as well. I got I did get the the paper and Alan Nixon. To be fair, I were one of those who used to mock. I mean, he got eventually got the Jordan Rhodes thing bang on. So to be fair, decent source compared to. He's got he's got, a, he's, he's got yeah. an half, half okay but the, strike rate. There's so fair. much though it's that not as good since there's a certain CEO <sighs> left though. Be honest. No, you can question everything about whether he's the right man, but I think what's interesting is that, and again, we've got to assume it's true. And if you think of this, you know, the striker there, um, who was it? And Bombay, who was the guy in the summer? The that that would never were interested. Oh, Lim, oh he Lim was Lim a Bombay, winger, wasn't Lim he? Bombay yeah. and yeah, that yeah, as well. Lim Bombay, yeah. If this is, it's almost an admission that we're a striker short. Which again, I touched on the radio the other day, Matt. That I've changed my mind again on that. On that, I thought we would, we had what we needed. But now I'm thinking, yeah, we do need some help and th- maybe this is it. It's an interesting one that just came out of the blue. But if you were saying we were linked in the summer, then maybe. But whether they'd come on or not is another matter. I, I wouldn't say mindset as you pre-season. I thought with, when we only play one, we've got two. He likes a big striker. It's known fact he likes a big striker, hence Naki leaving. Um, but there's, there's times this season when I've thought... It just, just be nice to have cuter. Yeah, it, it, even even if we had still had Naki Wells mm-hmm. off at bench for ten fifteen minutes. But I don't wonder, Neil. Though you know, we discussed in here about we've seen De on a, the pitch a few times, and it's like we've like scratched his heads. It never works, etc. So I wonder if he's thinking right. That is the way I'm probably going to go. I know it's an extra option, but maybe he's coming out that way of thinking that it is Mooney, Mooney, and. And maybe plus him one. or some plus one. I, I don't know. It would just it, it would just caught me by surprise. This story. We, we mentioned it two or three times of a of a series of pods, aren't we? That the Mooney the Patra thing together is. You, you might as well just take them both. They're off both quite. Both. They're both quite static target yeah, men as well, just, isn't there? So it's, it's about it, getting it, a different type work, for me. It's never going to work. Mm. If you're going to bring them both on, you've got to play a completely different way for me. You've got to start going Cardiff, yeah. Burnley type, and. Swinging yeah. crosses eye from all angles and hitting it long in that box, and that's when you need a little Pritchard round them to get knockdowns and stuff. But to be fair, Pritchard's going to go off, isn't he? If you're playing two strikers, probably, yeah, but he's but one of the better that, deliverers the one, of the ball. That if we've you got, are going to, yeah, that's when you do need yeah. him, funnily enough. But so the other striker we were linked with in summer as well, we randomly, this this kind of came out of nowhere as well because of this. We were linked with AC Milan's Andre Silva, a Portuguese international <laughs> striker <laughs> on loan, but again, he's a di- very, very different type. So but he's at Sevilla now. He's absolutely ripping it up there. Yeah, he's top goal scorer. <laughs> we're, been, we're linked with the guy who was top scorer in yeah. uh, Italy as well, Piatek or something. But yeah, and he's now linked with Barcelona and Liverpool. Yeah, and <laughs> saw yeah. that. And I was just like, can you imagine if we get? It feels like Bill Shankly all over again, doesn't it? But 
With, well, the, um, the other one wasn't there before World Cup that, that were mentioned quite well about Rebic at Croatia. Oh, yeah, he was last year, yeah. yeah. Four was, million. Who was the yeah, guy that million, we were after yeah. the championship bridge that never happened? What was his name? That big German guy. What was his name? Oh, Simon oh, Terodde. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, him. Simon yeah, how many yeah. times? God. He was, he was in the and building. And Terodde. Yeah. yeah, he was in the building yeah. at Canal He, he yeah. actually scored against us pre season, didn't he? Yeah, he did head him, was it? Yeah. Something, yeah. He's, he, he looks good. I've, I looked at his record. Apparently, did he seemed to do oh, quite well. He's been off one year for two or three days. He's got hijacked last minute. Yeah, yeah. Going back even yeah. more, who were the guy that we were meant to be after Lee Clark? He ended up at Leighton Orient up front. Oh, oh, Tahuay. 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 The great oh, Tahuay. I think we're still waiting for his international Mate, clearance. He could be the man. Is he still available on the He must come on. be on it, surely. I think he's old enough to be on this podcast. <laughs> <isn't he? laughs> um, yeah, so it looks like we've perhaps eyed or been eyeing a different type of striker for a while just going by links because usually the, the Andre Silva one seemed a little bit unrealistic at the time I think but Neil Maupay or Ma- Maupay I've, I've, French. I've certainly from let, let's be honest we all know where the main problem this season lies it's not rocket science you don't need to be a football genius to work it out so if if they're not looking for something different up front there's something not doing the job right well, the, being the, brutal. the problem for me is Brentford are a decent side this year they look good uh, they're in the they're around, in and around the top six I think, might, it I think costs more than the, the 10 minute. million that's been mentioned yeah, if they're definitely. in the playoffs in, in January or in and around a chance of promotion they're not letting him go for 10 million I don't know you can brand a fee that just seemed a bit daft in it 10 million how does anyone know you might not yeah. even be fit then right. he might have 25 goals yeah. and it's like yes. it's like yeah. James Madison last year I was quite keen on James Madison sort of September time and we were linked with him via Alan Nixon. Let's last, be honest. Time. Yeah. If Morpe carries on his current form, he's going to do a James and Madison, and, isn't he? and he gets another six, mm. seven goals between now and it New Year. Just an odd icon, wasn't it? It's just tw- a massive it's, it's icon. Twenty to come million. Two months before the window, it's odd. It's, it's twenty yeah, million, odd. and there's a queue a mile long for him. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Palace have already been linked, haven't they? So there you go, and he doesn't have to move far, does he, for no. that one? So it's uh, that, that's what we're up against in that league. There's, yeah, there, there's probably. Without being harsh, eighteen bigger hitters than us, yeah. and in club Bournemouth in that. Even though it's men. just it's just the way it is, isn't it? We've yeah, we've got facts. to get these players early, and that's Absolutely. that's what we've got to like. Light and Benzer and Diakar, we've yeah. gone early. So, and with Maupay being twenty two years old, it, I tell you what, what was encouraging for the weekend. Boxes. I watched Fulham against Arsenal, and yeah, they've spent hundred yeah, not million yeah. quid, and Arsenal. I've, absolutely wipe the floor with them I've had a big question mark over them since the summer Fulham because they yeah. play a certain attacking way yeah. and you'll find we found well when, it, it changed on Sunday he went, went three at back with wing backs and Cyrus Christie played all, almost yeah. alongside from two of that never rated up. him in the no, no absolutely no. not didn't we, we, others at one point yeah another one linked but his uh, yeah. Arsenal played like to Tony Christie <laughs> and uh, it, the you I start singing didn't seem to break third gear. Yeah, they were well, just very I, I'm good. I'm hoping that this is Fulham's Tottenham game like we so had this, last year. Yeah. So just um, so last year we played Tottenham and then we threw the baby out with the bathwater a little bit, didn't we? And we yeah. went suddenly defensive. So I'm hoping that Fulham get a bit of a, a crisis in identity. I think like what we they've did. done wrong, Fulham, is I'm not saying they're going to go down, but I think they're a little of a candidate to go down. But what they've done wrong for me is they've got promoted with. What everybody and his dog has said is the best team in championship over the last two years. By Wolves, yeah, by Wolves. But Wolves, yeah. apparently they were going up the season we went up. They were going up last season, blah, blah, blah. Carpet was out for them in our Ab- playoff absolutely. season, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, I think they decked out Wembley with Fulham and Sheffield Wednesday Colours the season <laughs> we went up, aren't they already for them? But they've come up and they've totally ripped that side apart. And it's if you, you look at... I looked at their team on Sunday, I'm thinking... It's unrecognisable. Who are you? Who yeah, are the you? only thing who I'd who argue about, you? Neil, is they've got... Under Shirley, we've not got a gun player like that who can just like... No. You know, Shirley plays for the Sun Saturday, we win. And, and he scored it with a brilliant yeah, goal. He got we win, on, we win men, as well, but, but it's... Uh, I think Mitrovic, it's, Mitrovic is a decent striker, yeah, yeah. I think, as well. I think it's an interesting it? debate, because like, I, I were looking around, because you get a bit of that, all of a sudden we're third bottom, and it's like my nose, nose bleed and <laughs> bio tissues and what have you. I thought I'd have a look at Southampton and while their fans are reacting, and wow, there's a lot of... I know social media is a bad thing to, as a gauge, but again, I, I, I were kind of hopeful that they'd be kind of down there and... Yeah, I, yeah. I think they were. There's, there's yeah. six, for me, there's six teams yeah. at the minute, which I think it was this point last year where West Brom just fell for... Because they started and they were, thir- they were up in the top four or five, yeah, like Bournemouth, were, yeah. and then they fell like a stone. And it's around about this time that you can kind of see who who is going to be down at the bottom, who's starting to drift off and... 
for me there are six obviously we're one of them yeah. um, Cardiff are obviously one of them um, Fulham uh, yeah. one that I've marked Newcastle uh, Southampton and the other one uh, West Ham I think West Ham just looked too good do you know yeah, for me um, they're, they're, they're capable of it Right, they were like flowing my new other week, didn't they? I just, I just, West Ham have got too much for me to be thinking about in bottom three. He's but, starting to take a bit of shape though, Matt, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, and, and one team that's um, struggling a little bit and you wouldn't expect it because, to coin your phrase, because they have a gun player, Crystal Palace are start. There are a few murmurs happening at Crystal yeah. Palace as well. I think Crystal Palace are a one-man team, the end. The thing that does not happen there, and we touched on it before, is the uh, the Holmesdale fanatics, is the, it's finished. There's yeah. a bit of split yeah, yeah. and that, and that's a bit of infighting. And that will affect them. Yeah, it will do, 100%. I, I think what I like about what we're do, doing, and we're still, I know there's, you know, there's some of the fans... Twitter or what have you but I think by and large we're all still together we're all behind the team the away following has been impressive we've still got what we had last season but obviously we just need to be start turning it yeah. to wins and part of me does in a worry inside just think yeah I know we've played well and the results will come but I'm, part of me is thinking well we're playing well and we're not winning what about when That's we start but if you, but if you that flip is my it, worry if yeah. you flip it we've not won a game in eight what have we drawn have we drawn three lost five yeah and we're on here are we drawn three or four? We've drawn four. Yeah. No, um, three. 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 Was three. three points? Yeah, we've drawn, drawn three. Lost five. Oh, lost count. No, lo- lo- lost <laughs> count. Lost <laughs> count. Lost three points. Three points. <laughs> it's, uh, I'll blame the prescription. Speed, on, again, yeah. Yeah. speed on the way home, Neil, and you'll have just as many points. That's Gabba Fenton and Amitriptyline I'm, I'm yeah. working its wonders. Uh, but if you look at it, we've got those three points. After eight games, we've not won a game. We've got a goal difference of minus two and a half thousand. Yeah. We're not bottom at league. No. And we're within a win of getting out at bottom mm. three. So flipping it from all the negativity of without a win, letting goals and etc. If you look at it on the other side, we're a win away from getting out yeah. of there. It's just frustrating. It's just like the game at Everton. We come out of there, we played well away, we were really happy. Next game is, and it's international break. That's so frustrating. And then yeah, you is. obviously you wind it on. I still think it's Watford away next game. I don't know why I'm Liverpool, kind anyway. of rejecting the Liverpool one. But yeah. that... You know, and about luck, I just think, I know it sounds a bit, we're really clutching here, but just that luck when we have had a good moment that we can't just have a... We yeah. used, all, like I said last week, we used all our luck up at Chelsea away. We just Yeah, I suppose, how can we <laughs> well, it was absolutely yeah, none. But yeah. one thing I'll say as well is that those six teams I mentioned, there's another one as well. We played on Saturday and they looked worse than us to me, but they're good in both boxes and they sneak points. I just wish, and I said it from the start of the season, I wish that they'd have stayed in Europa League another yeah, couple I of did. months because yeah, that would have killed them. And it'll be interesting to see that, how Watford um, react after a 4 0 defeat. Well, Watford well. are doing very similar to what they did last season, aren't they? They started mm. off really well and, and they then dropped like stone, absolutely yeah. plummeted. And they're, they're no great shakes. Mm. There's, there's teams out there that we know on us day, town can beat. And if we can, in, we've got 30 games left and we've pretty much got to have now a one in three. Record not far off. What for did at Wolves the week before? What in an ideal scenario going at? Would you like them to lose again, Neil, or would you like them to draw? What you know going to, get beat? Get beat yeah, just get like beat. kind don't, of crisis. Yeah, and, yeah don't and, don't and want right. to picking up points that are going to be yeah. anywhere around there. Because obviously they beat Tottenham. They're a funny side out there. Like, we caught them right last year. Obviously went there's, down there and we played really well. Still going to be eight, for me eight or nine teams who could go down. And that's the thing. Where for me, I'm. I was a little bit worried at one point because the, the fans seemed to be losing a bit of faith because you were mentioning as well there's empty seats appearing. But the atmosphere against Tottenham was brilliant. Honestly, it was it was one of the best atmospheres we've had for a good 12 months. It, it was it was fantastic. Really, really well, fantastic. And with the change in how we've uh, started being a bit more front-footed and, and going at teams, I can see the fans really responding again. And I think yeah. it's such a key thing is... Is momentum and and good for you know the fi- good honest, feeling. I don't I don't think it's a bad thing that it's Liverpool next either, because there'll be there'll be an automatic buzz for that. People say free hits, the lights. Yeah. yeah, people say free hits, but I think when I, you I play, don't, I don't buy that. When no, you, you're eight games in, you haven't won a game. There's no. When you play a top hit. six, wait, I think to to yeah. not get relegated, I think you have to surprise a top six team at one and point. And we did that last year, two or three times. And we, to be fair. Yeah, we need to surprise a top six team yeah. once or twice this season yeah. it's a shame it's not Man United to be honest instead of Liverpool but we need to at some point beat one of these guys and otherwise everyone else I, does I, I genuinely think point. we will though mm. I do think we've got it in us to beat one of these teams again because mm. we, one of them will rock up one day 
thinking they're just going to roll us over. That's what I thought, Matt, actually waking up kind of on Monday. Once you dust the settle as proud and I was had a good drink and I know we played well, but it would just I still had a quite a bit of a feeling that we should have that one again, we may regret. We, we could have won yeah. that. I, I do, mate. I really still think that. Well, we won't know that until no, sort of April time. No, we won't. We won't. Because you're thinking, do you gamble? Oh, you can't really, I suppose, gamble. A point of turf mode is always good. But when we get that equaliser, to be fair, we didn't kind of go back into a shell and like thinking, no. but we never. Yeah. I think. I You'd think have been it, stupid it to the, gamble. It was the though, game yeah. kind of yeah. just yeah. went. The, 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 the game went on the shinder injury. Yeah. That, that's when it sort of. They might as well have blunt final whistle. Yeah, I've, I've got a friend who's a, uh, a Burnley fan as well, and he, he sent me a message afterwards and said, Huddersfield deserved to win, they were the best side. So when, yeah. when opposition mm-hmm. fans are saying that, I think you can take some confidence. Which is quite surprising, really, seeing as their manager <laughs> yeah, said that they should have been out of sight by half time. He's, he's right, they should have been. So they should have been about three or four ones at town. Speaking of their manager, Neil, we shall move on to our new feature. The things you say. Your unbelievable. You're so unbelievable. Yep, whopper of the week. And this one is probably the easiest one we've done. Although saying that they've all been very, very easy to pick. Um, I'm going to give a dishonourable mention first to one of our own, and it kills me to do it, but De Poitre for that dive, what a whopper. De Woptre. De Woptre, yeah. Absolute weapon doing that. But <laughs> it's, just... it, it's clear for me, it's I feel, got to be... I feel harsh for him now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't. It's a shocking dive, shouldn't have done it, it's cheating. So, if there hadn't been this other chap in the way it would have been De Poitre, which obviously doing it one of his own would be a bit of a killer. But it's got to be Sean Dyche, whopper of the week, the most blinkered man in the Premier League. Absolutely ridiculous. They should have been out of sight by our time, apparently, in, in the lead. Ridiculous. But to go on like he did about the dive and about diving in general and whinging this, whinging that, Without any mention for Volk's elbow, without any mention for Tarkovsky's stamp, without any credit given to town for being basically the better side for ninety minutes, he begrudgingly said, "Well, <sighs> half decent second." But half, it didn't killed it? him, didn't it? Yeah. It killed him. So yeah, it's an easy one. It's an easy one. Sean Dice, you are the whopper of the week. You're unbelievable. You're so unbelievable. He seems to be a rather strange media darling, doesn't he? Despite his his Dennis Betts rugby league voice that he has, and your mate Ben says he's, he calls him a spanner eater or something, which. <laughs> 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 I didn't understand it, but I quite liked it at the same time. But yeah, he's definitely gravelly voiced. Um, it's the hypocrisy for me of Sean Dyche. He yeah. sits there and puts this smug face on, saying, "Oh, we've been we've been hard done to. We've had this done to. So everyone's diving." And then, but imagine if he on Saturday he comes out and he says, "De Poitre dive." I think hero of the week or heroine of the week, Vicky Sparks. I think she would commentate our game and match there. The only person, apart from your mate in the paper on Monday, that saw the stamp or mentioned the stamp yeah. so you're on about dishonourable mentions Lineker Wright Shearer they weren't far behind how oh, they missed yeah, that yeah you're right you're absolutely right to, to not even mention it that was the most galling thing even if they said it wasn't a stamp yeah. and they didn't think it were a stamp because Lineker said well come on to that uh, dive in a moment so I'm thinking okay so yeah, they're, they're going to mention the other the old, stuff yeah. but no no yeah it were, it were, it were pretty bad take a bow of Vicky Sparks yeah, I thought she was really good. Um, some people give female commentators a bit of stick, but I thought she was really good through it. So, well done, Vicky Sparks. Uh, best tweet of the weekend on it was Tony Regan, a Liverpool fan, says Huddersfield player dives, rightly condemned for it a match of the day. Tarkovsky then stamps on him, no mention. Volk's elbow Schindler, apparently an accident. 
No agenda from me, a Liverpool fan, but be honest and tell it like it is. And that is all we want. Yeah, it's all we ask for. As a football fan, that is all you ask for. For all teams, not just your own. You know, you, 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 can, you can be objective about all decisions, but just say it as it is. Don't, don't gloss over it. Don't ignore it because you don't want to speak about it. Say it as it is, factual. Don't give us any bull. Just be blatantly honest. But for all teams, not like I say, not just your own. It's easy to buy a son of your own and have your blue and white tinted glasses or whatever colour glasses for your team. But it's, uh, you know, it's we've all said, and nearly all town fans have said, De Poitre, it's a dive. Mm. You, des- you deserve booking for, you really deserve a ban for it, to be fair. But see it both ways. One, one person that was close to... Whopper of the week for me was the previous week. There was a a Northwest journalist who had about two hundred and thirty followers or something. So I had to check to see if he was real, and I can't remember his name now. It was something like Martin Lawrence or something. I remember him, yeah. But I don't think it was the Martin Lawrence. No. Said that Huddersfield Town. Did he say we were the worst team he'd the, ever the seen in the Premier League after this first the Premier League? Game? And the then slated team. us for anti-football despite yeah. 55% possession, more chances, yeah. and then said Philip Billing. Against the Champions League side. And Philip Billing was the uh, an anti-footballer. I thought, yeah. Oh, absolute man. <laughs> yeah. Just rubbish. So fair play to Vicky Sparks for calling out the stamp as well on there. So so moving on from Whoppers of the North West, um, who talk nonsense on Twitter, to good commentators from the BBC in Vicky Sparks to... Someone else from the BBC, um, Cosy, who will be yeah, joining us Yeah, go to a bit of a, an exclusive for uh, for our pod. So, Mr Jonathan Buchan is going to be joining us next week uh, from BBC Radio Leeds, the new sports editor. And, uh, yeah, he's going to come in and obviously answer any questions that we've got. So, people get your tweets in, keep them clean. Uh, and, yeah, obviously we want to pick his brains as well on Matt's Huddersfield. It'll be good because he's been covering the Sheffield teams for a lot of years, so it'll be interesting from an outsider coming in, what he's made of us, and obviously he'll give us an head up on the coverage because there's obviously been a lot of things, you know, said about, you know, the things on the, the station. So, yeah, it's, Johnny It's Buckley. very good of him, to be fair, to come on and sort of front up to... Yeah, it is. I think he wants to set the record else. straight but and yeah, he doesn't want it. He don't want to do it via the Twitter and, and that yeah. as well. So it's, it's great, obviously great yeah. for everyone. So yeah, uh, uh, and he won't look at anything. So yeah, Johnny's going to be on the uh, the pod in the international break next week as as we look forward as well to Liverpool. Fantastic. So it's next week is international week and we've had nine call-ups but one pulled out. So eight international call-ups for top tier nations as well. So we've not obviously not had an England international since... Ray Wilson in the 60s. Frank Worthington I almost said he was an under-23, I think, back in the 70s. But Ray John Wilson... John not count for that B. That I B don't think he does, or Lee Makel for his Ensley Insurance League B <laughs> <laughs> championship team. I don't think that counts. But So eight internationals. So we've moved on a lot from when we had the odd Welshman who, when Wales were rubbish, and Junior Mendes for Montserrat. So <laughs> it's um, it's an interesting uh, To be fair, interesting on Saturday, time. I think we're only one Englishman inside, aren't we? Johnny Oak. Oh, just to finish, just before oh, we go, I caught the ball on Saturday. I caught the ball, they put it over, he caught it, he spudged my coat, Joe Hart wanted it, I threw it straight back to him because we were losing proper... It, I couldn't believe how light it was. No wonder the ball is bending, no wonder yeah. Gilfie Sigurdsson could do what he can. No it, was, it? it was unbelievable, now. I couldn't believe it. But yeah, yeah they were my golden moment, yeah. I caught the ball, but amazing, I went on my phone, so I managed to... Uh, did, yeah. you not, did you not... Showed Joe Hart the ball and say that's how yeah. it's done. He got some right stick to Hart and he gave, he gave it back and that as well. He was giving a lot of banter back. I mean, some of it. I don't mind that. No, no some of it were too much abuse, but that's the way it is these days, unfortunately. Yeah. But he was trying to give it back and that as well. And yeah, I don't mind any of that. Fair play. Let, let's be fair, it whatever town fans are saying it on Saturday, he's heard it ten times worse. Yeah, elsewhere. he said that's last fair. week they interviewed him last week on I think it might have been Sky after the Burnley Cardiff game, and they're saying and he was saying, look, people give me stick, but it motivates me to do better, to play better. And he said it with a smile, and I just thought. That's a really good attitude to have. Um, yeah. Ex England internationally could sulk and he's in his thirties now. His money, he's he's, he's seen a thing or two on a football. Yeah, fair pitch. play to him. I'm going to sing us out. I've got a special request, a special song. Off you go, Lauren, Lauren de Poitre, stay on your feet for me. Did it, did it. Is this the moment for Lee Fowler? It is. Take your place in Division 2, Huddersfield Town. He 
his best. Steve Simonson clears the flame of the goal and collapses in a heap of tears. Pate's got a chance. Yeah. Pate scores. Jack Pate scores. Hendel is in there. Smith scores for Northfield Town. 3-2 Town. Boris Jerry, Danny Ward saves, Danny Ward saves. The quatch was in, round the hair, 2-0 Huddersfield Town. Christopher Schindler has a chance to write his name in Huddersfield Town legend. And he takes that chance!